Hi there, you guys. Um, I've continued to track all my numbers uh, using Climus's how did I sleep, uh, symptoms, the pulse, heart rate, the blood pressure, and whether I've been doing the things Climus wanted me to do. In addition to, this is week two of, uh, no, maybe this is the end of week two, because, yeah, this is it. So this is actually the beginning of week three for low-dose naltrexon. Um, I finished 14 days on 1.5 milligrams. Um, the first week I had a lot of itching on my knuckles and my ankles and joints, which is significant of an allergic reaction. Uh, but I have to say that it has totally gone down this week. So where I had that in the beginning, I don't have that now. I've been having a lot of headaches, but I don't know that that's the naltrexone because it just might be what's kind of happening to me. And my neck has been out of whack for quite a few months, and I've got a lot of disc problems there. Um, I have been religiously drinking, well, one to one and a half liters. Climus would like two liters of water, but I've sometimes gotten up, no, the most I've ever gotten up to is one and a half liters of water. So one to one and a half liters of water. I'm doing the Benefiber. I'm taking 162 milligrams of aspirin like she wanted, uh, doing the Benefiber, making sure the bowel movements are moving so that uh, there's no negative reaction to the um, naltrexone backing up on me. Today is the first day that I juiced. Um, I've been doing my uh, nuns, uh, and I have to order more of these. My girlfriend's coming in, so I'm going to try to get more of those. And I did do the juicing today. Um, as far as the energy index point scale, you know, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right. So I, I, I hadn't looked at it this way, but if I go back seven days, I had a five, five, four, four point five, three point five, five, five point five. Okay. So this last week. I've got to be a little bit more positive than I thought because to me it just doesn't feel like I'm getting out of this relapse. But the truth is I had a bunch of days that were fives, four to fives. Now if I go back the week prior, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I was having a 3.5 and 4.5s, and then I had one seven. So... And then the week prior, it was all 3.5s, 3, 2. So in reality, I have to say since the beginning of March, uh, I am coming up on the scale, even though it's a horrifically frustrating, because a 4 on the scale is 4 to 6 hours a day, sitting like I am, standing or walking, 4 to 6 hours out of 24 hours in a day. And I had been there a couple weeks ago. Then last week, I was kind of at that four to six hours, and right now, a uh, number five on the scale is getting eight hours in that day, and a six is about getting 11 hours. And so I have to say that, looking at the chart, I've got fives, 4.5 and a 5.5. So, so I've been getting probably the six hours, seven, eight hours, and I've gotten up to yesterday was 10 hours, which was a fluke. So I'll just keep plugging it along. And um, the other thing that I've been noticing, it's really kind of weird, which is the whole reason why Climus wants you to do this blood pressure thing. Um, you have to measure it while you're horizontal before you lift your head off the pillow and your feet off the floor. You take your blood pressure and your heart rate without moving first thing in the morning. You wake up, put the blood pressure cuff on, and take it. Then you get out of bed, set the timer for 10 minutes to be vertical. Do not sit down in that 10 minutes. Take it again. Now, if the bed heart rate and the standing heart rate after 10 minutes has a 30-point spread or more, it means that your POTS, postural orthostatic tachycardia, is in, in, um, is in play. And then the other thing here is uh, the, the blood pressure, whether the blood pressure is dropping or not. And it's interesting because there does seem, let me go back to the days that there's a POTS. That one didn't seem to be true. Yeah, that one doesn't seem to be true either. I don't notice it so much with my blood pressure dropping, but what I have noticed is I've had days where I've had a 54-point increase in my heart rate just 10 minutes later for standing, 37. 
uh, let's see here, 31, 30, 43 point, 33, 38, 31. Now, there was a couple of days, absolutely, I have a 25, 26, 25, 23, 28, 27. So it's, it's a hit or miss. There's enough days that are over. Let's see, that's a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Let's, let's do it again. That's 9. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So 50 of the days uh, for the last few weeks, I have POTS triggered the moment I stand on my feet. The other 50% of the days, there was still a good drop uh, increase. 25 points, 25, 27, 28, 28. 23 isn't so bad, but clearly um, it's a 50-50, and I kind of use that as my gauge. Um, okay, have had some crashes, and I'm definitely up to the point where I'm taking naps. So, I think there is a chance next Monday <coughs> I may start loading Immunivir because my girlfriend, Gail, who left Italy, is coming back for Easter in a month. And I know when I start doing two drugs at once, it makes me sicker, but in the long run, it will make me get better faster. And so I'd rather load the second drug now and deal with this uncomfortable confrontation of loading the immunivir on top of the low-dose naltrexin at the low rate, so that this way, by the time she comes, I'll be at a better point. I will be used to having the immunivir, and I will be on two pills of the low-dose naltrexin because I do want to be higher on the scale. I want to go out and do things with her when she comes for Easter vacation here. Okay, that's about it, you guys. Bye.